Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about um, what makes a good way to start a story. That was a question from uh, a subscriber. And uh, before I do, um, if you have not already, click the uh, bell down here right above the description to be notified when I upload uh, a new video. Um, and uh, that way, well, you'll know when it goes up because subscribing apparently doesn't let you know automatically. So anyway, um, what makes a good story? Uh, we're, um, seems like a, <clears throat> um, it's kind of the theme story and dialogue and things this week. Um, one of the things that uh, has helped me, um, just, just thinking about what stories really pulled me in, um, and you have to think the very obviously the beginning of the story is the first thing somebody reads so you need to hook the reader um, um, pretty quickly and um, the best way to do that is one have something happening um, that kind of sets up the character the scenario um, there needs to be some action that kind of conveys that information so I, I kind of think of it like you're walking you're, you walk into a room or a party or whatever and a dull party is one where everybody's just sitting around, you know, chattering and stuff. Um, or at least uh, dull to like, you, you have to, well, yeah, a dull party, right? Everybody's just kind of sitting around. Um, a, party, a party that you, at least those are not the parties you're going to talk about. If you go to a party where you walk in and something just, the first thing you see, you know, is just something crazy or um, something out of the ordinary happens and you, you first thought is, what did I just walk into? Um, story is kind of like that. Your reader shows up to this party, uh, walks into this room, and you want them to stay in this room and be interested. So something has to happen that makes them want to know more uh, and kind of connects with them either on a curiosity level or an emotional empathy kind of level. So. Um, when you have a story, uh, when I read a story, and I don't know if you're, you're this way, but you read a story where that just opens up with some extended narr uh, caption narration, uh, extended just monologue about something. Um, that's hard to, you may push through and it'd be a great story and there's, I'm, you know, there, there are always exceptions, but generally when it's, in comic books in particular, when you're, um, and, and well, movies and TV are the same way. The great movies are, are like, think about Star Wars, right? The beginning of the, the original Star Wars. Um, you have, yes, you have the scrolling thing, right? You also have John Williams. Um, imagine reading, the, sitting there and quietly reading that without John Williams' soundtrack playing in the background, right? So you've already got this excitement building that culminates to the very first scene. And the first opening beginning of the movie is, you know, the little rebel ship and the huge um, uh, Star Destroyer. And you know, like immediately, you know, these people are outmatched. And then you meet, you're introduced to, you know, C-3PO and, and R2-D2 and kind of what the, it sets up their mission. And then Darth Vader's there. And you know he's a bad guy just from what he's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, he's intimidating and breaking the rebels' necks and stuff. You know, very imposed. So you kind of get all this information that makes you want to know more. You're not... Um, introduced to the Empire by a, a, a character explaining to another character what the Empire is, right? You know what it is because you see they're bad and there's a group resisting them. So you get this information. So that that, that kind of thing. Uh, or it needs to be like an emotional hook. Like you have a character, you introduce a character, and something happens that, make, that connects on an emotional level, whether it's a struggle, a um, you know, a tragedy, uh, something like that. Um, so the best way to start a story, I mean, there's, there's so many good ways to start a story and I'm by no means an expert, but just thinking about the stories that pull you in and have pulled me in, um, is a clue to what kinds of things people by nature are pulled to, uh, in a story. So, um, I guess it's easier what not to do than, you know, it depends on what your story is as far as what works, but get to the point, get some action, get something that connects with a person on a human level, uh, 
their curiosity, their emotion, um, and what not to do is drag out a beginning. Never drag out a beginning because that's your, that's the point where you've got to sell the thing. You've got to, um, you, you've invited the reader into the room and you want them to stay there and listen to this thing you're going to do. Uh, it's like the opening uh, remarks of a good talk or something that pulls someone in. Um, and it kind of goes back to the what I was talking a few days ago about how much dialogue should be on a page. If you open the page and at the very beginning is just um, huge amounts of dialogue uh, with nothing really going on, uh, the dialogue may be fantastic, but you're already at a disadvantage in a visual medium like comics. Um, again, there's probably exceptions to the rule, but in general, um, I think that, that holds uh, pretty true. Um, the other thing is, I think you need to show things rather than explain things. Anytime you can show something, this gets back to like comics being a visual medium and leaning too heavily on dialogue, um, is if you can, you know, you say, oh, this, he, this guy was, uh, you know, you're describing someone as being a jerk. It's better to show them being a jerk to establish who they are than have a character explaining that they're a jerk. Um, it's better to have a bad guy um, show that he's a bad guy, what kind of person he is, rather than someone talking about this person or this scenario. Show a, um, I, mean, I think there's, there's, a, um, there's a tendency I've noticed uh, for some people to try and write, uh, explain too much. You know, um, people aren't stupid, uh, generally speaking. Uh, especially when it comes, like there are things that, that you don't need to, to explain every, like especially in a sci-fi story or a fantasy story, or whatever, you don't need to explain everything. Um, I like it when I go into a world where, well, it's like, again, Star Wars is a good example. Uh, I, I know, it's like the whole midi-chlorian force thing, right? We kind of know there's something uh, going on about the, the force uh, in Star Wars, and that we're first introduced to it when Vader chokes, the force chokes the guy at the conference table. And they just had this little thing, you know, he's like, uh, your sad devotion to that religion. And he chokes him, you know, whoa, there's, you know, obviously this thing is real and it can, makes this guy powerful and stuff. We don't have all the information. Now, of course, later in the prequels, it's explained the midi-chlorian BS, which I'm not a fan. I didn't need that. But everything doesn't need to be explained. In fact, the less you can, the more you can show and leave, I think, a little bit of mystery is better. So, um... There's a tendency for people to, I think, explain too much. Um, I think, you know, I honestly think explaining too much takes a person out of the story because if you're immersed in a situation, you know, if you're in this world, you're not going to understand everything because you're a stranger to the story, to the world, and you've got to try to pick up on things. And that's part of the fun and the engaging part of a story is someone figuring things out and not knowing and being explained everything like an infant right up front. Um, and if you can do that at the beginning, that I think hooks people. Again, these are just some of the things just as I've kind of reflected on what gets me into a story and the stories that I like, which again, may be different for you. Maybe, you know, think about what, what stories, what are your favorite movies, TV shows, and think about where did those lose you? Like think about, uh, uh, um, okay, like Lost is a good example. Lost set up all these things, right? And it, the mystery is what kept bringing people back. It lost a lot of people when um, the, they were never resolved. Um, or, um, which apparently, I, I saw a, something written up where they had no intention of ever resolving them, which is why it lost a lot of people. Kind of, after a while, you kind of picked up on that. Um, you really can't fool the audience in that way for very long. Um, so think about, like, where does a story lose you? When did the beginning, you know, not engage you? And why? Just kind of pick apart things like why do certain stories, you know, what, what part didn't you like? And uh, I mean, write, write a story that you think would grab you and then get it out there and see if, um, see if people stick with you. So just some thoughts uh, answering the question. Um, I do read everybody's comments. I don't always right away be able to, I, I, I try to respond to all of them. I don't get a chance to like right away. Um, Especially, I'm trying to wrap up a deadline. I've got a, a book that I'm working on now. I'm inking uh, G.I. Joe versus the Six Million Dollar Man, which will be out, I think, in January. I think. February 1st of the year, 2018. Um, and uh, if you haven't checked out um, my webcomic, the link is below, William the Last. You can check it out at williamthelast.com. You can read it on Webtoons. 
Uh, I'd rather you think read on Webtoon, but uh, they, they're both uploaded. When they upload a page, a new page should actually go up tomorrow. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else. Uh, I've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash Brian Shearer, also link below. Uh, subscribe. Where is it? It's over here. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out some of my other videos, and uh, I will see you tomorrow. If you, also, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, what stories do you like, and what don't you like, and what hooks you? So, all right, I'm out.